So let's make that endpoint. It's time to get going. Let's go back to our application here where I type in npm install. Let's remove that. I want to make a new endpoint now. I want to make our first REST API <clears throat> from scratch. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going into Daft Monk's uh, full stack here. And if you go into the main page, this is the, the guy you can find on GitHub again, the generator Angular full stack. And I scroll down, there's a place called generators. In the generators, there's one called server side endpoint. And I'll try and open that one. It'll just scroll me lower on the page. <clears throat> it's right here. So what I want to do is copy this line right here. It says you have to write yo Angular full stack uh, colon endpoint and then the name of whatever you want to build. Let's try and do that. Let's try and, and create our new one, but not a message. We want to do something else. I just copied it over here and I want to make an employee endpoint. So this is for employees and we're going to do that now. I just press enter and it'll stop building this. The first thing it'll do, it'll, it'll ask me, what do you want the URL to be like we wrote slash things inside Postman. Let me just show you that one. So it'll ask me, what do you want this guy to be called uh, inside your um, inside your application here? So let me just go back to the console and it says, well, I want it to be called employees. That's fine. Let's say yes to that. So I just press enter and now I have an API slash employees. And it built all of these files for me under the employee folder, which is also created for me. So if I go over here, back to my um, JS Web Apps folder on the cost planner, you'll see under API now a folder called employee popped up with a lot of files in here. I'll try and run over them in a second. Before I do that, I told you that I wanted to go back to routes. So if I go back to route, you'll see that now there's actually a guy here called API employees now. So now I can actually hit this route right here. What else can I see? Well, if you go under config and socket IO, actually something was created here as well. And that's actually what sets up the socket communication. So we have real time communication set up for us as well. A lot of other beautiful things have happened, but let's not overdo it here. Let's just keep it simple. So those are the two ones that are interesting. Now, what did it actually do for us? Let's look at the index file. So it made the get for um, all the employees and the get for a single employee using its ID. It made the post for an employee, the put for an employee, which updates him, the patch, which also updates him right now, and the delete one. So now we, we have all these things available for us to actually start working with employee. Was that all it took? Actually, yes. So let's try and run our code now. So I'll just do the um, grunt serve to launch the application and just sit tight for a second. There we go. Now we don't have any UI to actually hit the endpoint. The UI only works with the things right now. So we have to use Postman. I just want to see it running and right now it seems to be running. So let's go into Postman and instead of things, we'll write employees. We'll do a get and we'll say send. What? I didn't get any employees. What the, what's going on, man? This is crazy. Well, of course I don't because I haven't made any employees yet. Hmm. Okay. Let's try and post an employee then. Do you remember the steps? Try to do it yourself. Pause the video, do it yourself. Good. So this is how I do it. You go under body, raw, and I select JSON to send JSON, that'll create the extra header here we talked about. And then I'll add my first employee. And you don't know this yet, but I know that he'll have a name. And let's call him um, Paul the Evil. Really bad name, but that's his name. We'll send this, and now you'll notice that Paul the Evil has been created in the database. And just to let you know that this is actually created inside a real database somewhere, I'll just open the management studio for Mongo that we installed earlier. So now Mongo management studio is running. Let's try and open the course plan dev. We saw that in the config file that I was actually there. And under this, we have an employees. When I double click it, I see my employee, Paul the evil. And if I expand on this, you'll see all the properties on him right now. 
everything's running. We have an actual connection to our database. We have an actual REST API running. That was all I had to do. Now I can just, just to show you that everything is actually working. Let's try and do a post with another guy. Let's do uh, myself, Lars Bilde, and send that. It says, return something with an ID. So I expect it to be there. Let's do uh, a new refresh here. Now I have two, Lars Bilde and Paul the Evil. Okay, let's try and update the guy just to see the put is also working. Under employees, body, I want the name to be Lars you will be there instead. And now I of course also need to send his ID like this. Boing, I'll send it. Now it's changed to last Yule Builder. Is that the same for the database? Let's rerun this. Now it says you last Yule Builder. So we have perfect access here. Let's also delete Paul the evil. He was just a bad guy. Before I do that, I want his I just want to get his ID here. And I'll go to delete. I'll add Paul the evil here send unexpected token that's because i still have some information inside my body didn't expect that let's delete it and delete the header and do a send again and there we go if i go back to my employees and i run it again now paul the evil is gone okay so the rest api is running and i didn't do anything except running that single line for employees but i want more information inside my employee and we'll look into that for the next lesson